The heat equation expresses conservation of energy inside a domain. Already on physical grounds we can infer that it will be not enough to fully specify the temperature for all points in space and all time. The initial state will matter of course, and what happens at the boundaries matters as well. Are we, for example, supplying heat or not? This is expressed by the initial conditions and by the boundary conditions, which need to be given as part of the problem. What these conditions are is usually dictated by the underlying physics of your problem. For the heat equation we will discuss a few possibilities, which are the conditions you will encounter in practice most often. So here we have our rod again with our heat equation as we derived earlier, where the temperature is given as a function of x and t. Now, boundary conditions. We will have to tell something at x equals 0 and x equals l. We can, for example, prescribe what the temperature is at 0 and at l. t0 and t1. That is a possibility. We can make sure the rod is kept at a constant temperature at 0 and at l. Such a type of boundary condition where you specify the value of u is called a Dirichlet boundary condition. We also have an other option. We can describe the heat flux, so called Neumann condition. What do we do in that case? Then we will specify the q at 0 and l. q equals minus kappa du dx, so we basically specify ux at 0 and t and ux at l and t. We specify some value, we specify some inflow at 0 or at L. Special case, we say there's no inflow. So no inflow or insulation means ux equals 0 at 0 and also of course at L. So that are two possibilities, Dirichlet boundary condition, Neumann boundary condition. And of course three, we can prescribe many more things. We have many different types of boundary conditions, well, which will be usually more difficult. So we will start with the 1 and 2, the Dirichlet and Neumann boundary conditions, which are also, from a physical viewpoint, the most important ones. Then, apart from the boundary conditions, we also specify, uh, need to specify how our temperature profile is initially. So we have to specify some initial condition at time 0. So, is it warm or cold or whatever? So, we need to describe the initial temperature profile u x, 0. Now, let us do a short recap. So, what is the difference between ODEs and PDEs? So, for an ODE, you have only one independent variable. And the crucial difference is for PDE, you have more independent variables. That means that also, for an ODE, you need only to prescribe either some initial conditions or some boundary conditions. You only need to specify conditions for this one independent variable. And on the contrary, for PDE, you will always need to specify both some initial conditions and boundary conditions. So you need to specify more. And thirdly, the di uh, third difference, well, for ODEs, solving them is, well, straightforward, well, relatively straightforward. Uh, also numerically, a lot easier. Uh, PDE, solving PDEs, is almost always challenging. So those are main difference between ODEs and PDEs. However, in nature, we will often encounter PDEs. So even though they are more challenging than ODEs, we will really need to be able to uh, uh, solve them as well.